What if a 26 foot trailer could have 32 foot of space and function? Everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV getting you some updated footage for 24 on the 2509 Rockwood S Mini Light or the 25 FBD S, something like that, Flagstaff. I don't know. Rockwood and Flagstaff are the same thing. I'm probably going to call them Rockstaff from here on forward because it's two names for the exact same product. But this is a very interesting RV because it has. Um, it's been sought after by almost as many people who are looking for a couple's camping excursion as a family camping excursion, despite the RV having bunks. So why is that? And I think it's because Rockwood does Rockwood things. They're always trying to do plus one more than just about anybody else. Like, um, they are, you know, uh, an all aluminum skeleton product right here. The only part of this RV that is not laminated is the floor so they can avoid soft spots. That's got a 5 8 tongue groove plywood floor decking. The rest of it, anything that's load bearing, including the dinette, anything that they're going to build is built with a uh, welded aluminum cage structure to help keep the weight down. The length of this is very manageable, 26 feet. It fits for a lot of half ton towing. They're also doing things like better tires, better suspension, and TPMS to give you a better ride handling, towing, and going excursion with one of these. But they're also doing things like they're one of the first to factory standardize any level of solar, and they're still one of the only ones doing any kind of factory inverter. And this year they cranked that up a notch to give you even more power off that. And today we're going to look at one that has the expanded solar package available on it. This model, it gives you, during the daytime, you have the, the living space of a super slide RV because the bed goes away and doesn't eat the floor plan up. But at night, they also include a privacy curtain, so you have that one-piece, easy, up-down, non-bendy bed, so you don't have to make your bedding every morning, every night. And there's so much I haven't talked yet about on this one. I'm going to show you some areas in this RV that are awesome. And I'm also going to point out some things that are not awesome about it to give you the best, fairest uh, understanding of this thing possible. And if you appreciate that approach, hit that subscribe button. And let's get in there. And an interesting thing happened with this floor plan recently, not specifically from Rockwood, but the actual originator of this floor plan has essentially started building it again. So this is kind of interesting the Jayco Whitehawk was the first manufacturer to build this layout. And then Rockwood came through a couple years later and just being real, basically ate their lunch. Um, since then, a bunch of other manufacturers have started building this. And in the meantime, Jayco tried different versions of a Murphy bed bunkhouse, but nothing quite took. So what's funny is they just kind of went back to basics and Jay Feather, Whitehawk's little brother, now has a very good uh, approximation of a floor plan like this. I'll have some, I, if I don't already have it out, I'll have some video out for it. It's called a 21 MBH, but that's not what this video is about because there's other guys like Surveyor and Freedom Express that also build something like this. What does Rockwood bring to the table? Why would you spend your money here? Well, pet friendly, carpetless, ventless flooring, and that slide flooring on camera reads like carpet, but that's that marine woven kind of stuff. So that is a, uh, a carpetless slide floor. Now, as I, I sit down here, you might notice anywhere they can, they're very good about putting windows and they make them open for airflow uh, when they possibly can. Um, speaking of airflow, your cold airflow from that air conditioner will be nice and brisk because these are standard with a 15,000 BTU air conditioner and double ducted air conditioning. They actually run two air runs off that one unit right there. They do not offer 50 amp. They do not offer a second AC on the mini light series of these. But their big brother ultras they do but ultra doesn't make this layout you might notice surprising campsite window coverage and a privacy shade in that entry door that's another thing that rockwood and flagstaff have been doing a little bit longer than most manufacturers um and this is one of those areas where a little floor plan like this very often suffers from well two types of countertop typically jack and squat and that sucks, you know, if you're going to have a family camper, even with an outside camp kitchen, sometimes you want to do some prep work inside. Don't get me wrong. This is not the world's biggest kitchen whatsoever. But for a tiny camper, they did a good job giving you some square foot of space. And this little folding countertop extension really helps right here. I think what I would do when I get to my destination, I would set that up and I would put a nice tall wastebasket right under that. Because otherwise, this RV really doesn't have a good spot for a wastebasket, uh, you know, any other way. Now, that is a uh, over 10 cubic foot, 12 volt compressor fridge over there. 
By default, this has a 200 watt factory solar package. The model we're looking at today, well, not the model, the copy of the model we're looking at today was built with the optional second 200 watt panels. So that's very, very handy. Um, the uh, other thing here is their bunks are kind of like Jayco's where they're rated for more weight, like 600 pounds per double bunk. And uh, they're using, I used to say 50% thicker mattresses, but I think their mattresses are double the industry standard now, not because Rockwood got thicker, but because everybody else got worse. <laughs> it's kind of like Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's ice cream is always more expensive, um, but they haven't shrank their containers like everyone else has. Now, Ben and Jerry's containers were always small before. This is also another interesting detail. I like the USB plugs that they had over there, but you have a switch right here that from ground level, the adults can reach. So if you want to, you can just reach up in there and be like, uh-uh, lights out, kids, you know, and, and you can uh, basically shut all that kind of stuff down. Now, obviously, we're looking at a double over double bunk with a fold-up cargo bunk arrangement. That is yet another of your requests that have been fulfilled here by the Rock Staff Group. Um, something else that they've always pretty much done and continue to do, other manufacturers are finding ways to make RVs cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. And a lot of those, like that oven right there, in terms of appliances, is basically the single most expensive appliance uh, in this RV. Well, to just reduce the price tag, a lot of manufacturers just go, okay, no more ovens. Well, some people still like ovens. So not only is Rockwood continuing to do ovens, they're continuing to do larger ovens that I think a lot of people like. Now, I'll get you through all the storage here in a few minutes. I want to kind of, let me actually slowly tilt you back up uh, so I don't make you motion sick. The, the entertainment, by default, you look at this and the TV, it only faces the slide. It only faces the dinette. So on a rainy day, some people say, yeah, well, I'll just get the table out of the way. I'll throw a pillow on the back and I'll make it like a sofa lounge. You could, you certainly could, but... You've got a sofa up here. The good news is you'll find that that TV can actually pivot around a, a couple different directions. And this right here is kind of the thing that I, I, I think makes this floor plan work so well is during the day, you have the space of a super slide because we have uh, a full sofa and we have a full dinette, but you're getting it in something that doesn't actually require a super slide. And it's personal, it's subjective, but I personally think that Rockwood does the best Murphy bed system out there. They're one of the only ones still doing a one-piece, easy, up-down, like, gas strut-assisted mattress system right here. Where you don't, like, you, you can see how you have those buckle straps, basically. You don't have to make the bed every morning, every night. You gotta make sure you don't drop your pillows down in Neverland at the headboard. But the fact is, you can, you, you just have the bed made, and you strap all the, the bedding down. Most Murphy beds are um, what I call a bendy bed, where you have to basically remake the mattress every single night. Um, and those can be cool, because they're less expensive, they're lighter weight, and they provide better front pass-through storage, but... Some people just want an easier mattress. You know, I get it. Look in the bottom right corner of the screen. You see those household outlets down there? That's one of the other really cool things is that they, they are giving you the headboard shelf and those outlets. And um, those are, like most of the outlets in this RV, those are prepped and run to the now 1800 watt inverter, previously 1000 watt inverter last year. So now an inverter big enough that at a travel stop, you can't run the air conditioner, you can't run the microwave, but if you wanted to run the coffee pot, that you can do now. And it's a major, major shift from what they were doing before. That can provide a great deal more function. I do want to also mention I'm not using a fisheye wide-angle lens. This does have a mini-barreled ceiling. It's six and a half foot on the sidewall, but you gain about two and a half inches of total interior vault. And it's amazing how much of a difference that makes in really opening everything up. The light colors help also. Now, I have to kick you over the realm of wide-angle lens mode to kind of be able to showcase all this in one shot for you. And I'm not going to crawl on the bed today. I'll tell you, I'm a little over six foot. This is a short queen bed. My feet would definitely hang off the end of it, but it is freaking cold out. Like, you know, you don't see snow on the ground, but you, you don't realize it's like super single-digit temperatures here the day that I'm recording this. Like, my hands hurt. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm just letting you know. I'm not taking my shoes off today. It's cold, man. Uh, but, you know, there's those extra details like, uh, they, they give you the privacy curtain, the extra outlets. And behind the privacy curtain in that area of the RV, there's actually a separate light switch for basically bedroom lighting versus living room lighting. So it's awesome little detail that you can separate that. And when you do pull that privacy curtain, it is, um, it's only the bed area. So people can still walk in and out of the door, 
Um, they're not going to walk in and look at you directly. Now, you might have noticed how I kind of wrestled with that a little bit when I flipped it back up. There's a safety lock mechanism there. So, like, if you want the bed down and you want to sit at the headboard, you won't lawn chair yourself and get yourself trapped in there and, like, pull a hammy or something like that. Like, that's that's not a weekend that anybody wants to have. And then just those extra details. Like, little kick-out um, incliners for your feet. It's not a full recliner because the back doesn't move, but you do at least get the ability to kick your feet up when you are so inclined. And so those extra little, I call them Rockwood doing Rockwood things that they do that make me appreciate this brand so much. Much. Um, in case you were kind of curious, you might have noticed the stickers on that TV, by the way. I just realized I kind of forgot to talk about that. The TVs are all smart TVs now, but most of your more kind of premium brands have adopted that. Now, I I'm going to get the rest of the storage open for you in a minute. This is something, I if I could have one wish, this is something I would like them to actually reinstate because they used to do this. No freaking struts, man. You know, nothing to hold that up is it's just not my favorite especially from a, a very well appointed very detail oriented brand i feel like that was an area where where that juice was not worth the squeeze and getting rid of it like they've done so many other things like they had a tire pressure monitoring that other R rv manufacturers are going to tell you is an aftermarket upgrade but they didn't put struts on the cabinets now I, I get that i'm making a big deal out of a little thing but that's there's not a lot else to complain about on this rv in terms of the execution now, you don't have windows on both sides of the slide because they extended the slide a little bit. And if you notice over here, they actually included some storage right inside it. Now, opening that up, looking up in there, you can see that could be a hanging closet. Those are adjustable, removable shelves, if that's something you're interested in doing. That table is also free-floating. So if you want to move that in front of the sofa or outside, you can do whatever you want with it. And that whole dinette is a welded aluminum cage structure under it, just like the whole RV. That's just an interesting thing they do here. Now, beside the dinette, between the dinette and the bathroom, you have that vertical pantry space. That's really important because where they located the television of this is where a lot of manufacturers would normally put overhead storage. Well... By putting the TV where it could be viewed basically anywhere in the RV, it doesn't have the overhead storage. So they had to come up with a different area for it. So you didn't lose storage, you moved storage. Um, and there's other RVs that, with a similar layout that have more storage, yes. But they're also probably a little bit longer. So kind of keep that in mind. They're maybe not playing on necessarily the exact same level playing field. It's interesting, too. They, um, they, they're including a ladder where almost nobody else is. Like, so many people ask me, how do you get into the bunks? Well, you either got to buy a ladder or you got to throw your kid. You don't got to do that in Rockwood. It's just easier. I will tell you, those things aren't exactly the most comfortable on bare feet, but I haven't seen almost any factory ladder that's comfortable on bare feet. It's just like, it seems like it's a thing that should exist, but apparently doesn't. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it should have to be that hard, but... Uh, hey, neither neither here nor there, I uh, I do suppose. Now, you might have noticed, again, any little nook and cranny space they could, like the, the drawers on both sides of the, the counter, that all has good storage on it. But you may have noticed under those drawers and over here under the pantry, if when that was open, it was like just paneled off. It wasn't for storage. Those are access panels to things like, like water heaters, water pumps, so, pardon me, something like that. I literally just, just hiccuped out of nowhere. Um... I didn't want to like blast it into camera. Now, popping this open right here, one of the nice little things that you'll find on these is uh, their, uh, their doors. If it's going to bang into something, they're really good about doing a simple, small thing so that you don't end up with like the door going kablam and like smashing into, I don't know, your thermostat and breaking your, your heating and cooling system. It's funny. How, again, just a simple little detail like that can have such a huge impact. That is a porcelain bowl stool, by the way. And overall, I think the space around that thing was pretty fantastic. You might have a hard time seeing it because that uh, curtain is kind of blocking it, but there is a heat vent coming off the side of that tub into the bathroom right here. Um, it's not a small sink. It's just a nicely sized countertop, which is, again, kind of a rare find in travel trailers. And that window right there, is one of the very few in this RV that does not open for airflow. Um, the good news, though, is, and this is part of the reason that Rockwood does the giant gap at the top of their bathroom doors. I call it the peekaboo, I smell you door, because they use a bigger vent fan standard, 
and their bathroom window doesn't open for airflow. So it has to be, if you want to push air out, you have to be able to pull air in. That's why they do it. Now, that's not why every manufacturer does it. That is, that's why Rockwood does it. Now, every manufacturer is going to tell you that's the reason, but that's not actually. It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, headroom in the shower. With the mini barrel, it's not bad. Thankfully, they do have that skylight for headroom, but I'm a little over six foot. My head definitely has to be in the skylight right there. So overall, there's good features. There's, you know, not good features, whatever. One of the, um, really, and there, there's no way to fix this, so it's not like it's a wish list item for me, but one of the only Achilles heels on this RV for me is the access that you do get in road mode uh, because it's, well, it's, it's not good. <laughs> Because, as you will very quickly discern, we uh, we lose a lot of space with that slide closed. Now, it's a rack and pinion slide, so you don't see any, like, cables or the, the Schwintech worm gears off the side. And the Murphy bed is lost in road mode with this one. I wish it wasn't. And if they made the RV a little bit longer, it might be available. But then the RV would be heavier, more expensive, um, you know, more of a towing concern. So that's the thing. Every RV's greatest asset is its greatest liability. Now, there are other builders, um, you know, who make similar floor plans to this one. But the smaller they get, the less travel functional it becomes. Kind of like if you see here, everything's kind of in the way. Now, by the way, for transit, here's a pro tip for you. You should have that tabletop folded down for transit. That'll keep it from jiggle banging around and smashing into things. Now, you are, if you're careful, you can put your backside on that counter sit on it and spin on it <laughs> and you can get yourself over the countertop uh doing the butt scoo boogie and then you can get to the fridge to the bunks to the bathroom and the bathroom door can open if you do that but by default this one does not have great travel access it just has a nice friendly traveling size weight and suspension package now i suppose in an emergency bathroom pinch you could use the cargo bunk to get you know one of the kids up into the bathroom but remember you do have the cargo bunk function um if you uh like folding e-bikes can fit in here very nicely the one thing that would be nice is if they added some kind of cargo tie downs into that floor um so that you know if you did have something like that you'd, you'd have a better way of securing it in transit um as it currently stands they don't have anything like that you're gonna have to figure it out but this rv also does have a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking that can uh, more easily allow you to be able to add certain little widgets and whiz bangs like that. And by the way, do you like kind of seeing these before and after the slide open close shots? And while you're leaving me a note on that, we're gonna start diving into this sucker right here. One of the nice things is it is a single headed sewer monster. So your kitchen, your bathroom, everything all empties out here at what I think is the best possible spot in the RV for your sewer hookups. Although with the mud that kind of caked on this, this RV is like fresh off the apple cart, Mary. It, it just landed from the RV manufacturer and we had some weather recently. So picked up a little bit of road grime and debris. Um, but uh, brown sludge hanging off a sewer pipe, <laughs> certainly not the best looking thing you've ever seen now i'm going about this one apparently backwards today i just the, the way that it happens to be happening let's start right down here where we've got ourselves a 3,000 pound um accessory hitch nope nope sorry 300 pound accessory hitch um it even says right on it not for towing which is where the 3,000 pound number clipped into my head but 300 pound accessory hitch for bike racks small generators etc but notice it still has a rear bumper which is kind of cool and if in case you want a totally separate like stinky slinky sewer hose kind of tube you can always add one of those that's very easy to do the underbelly is enclosed it is not forced air heated which kind of spooks some people um these were one of the very first brands of rvs though that standard include uh, thermostatic holding tank heaters. Basically, um, according to Rockstaff, they've they've tested those things down to the point that at negative 32 degrees, they were. That's the point where everything in the holding tank finally basically froze up. That's pretty cold. Now it actually gets colder than that in some areas of the country. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, their outside camp kitchen on this model has changed a little bit over the years, but it's kind of it's sort of settled into what we have here where it had that separate hot cold kind of garden hose sprayer as well as you see the the pull out cooktop and that little mini fridge right there 
Now, the outside speakers are up a little high for my liking, but I gripe about that all the time. And look at the awning space. Like, I'm having to back way up between a couple trailers over next to this RV right here just to try to get it all in frame. For a small RV, they did a good job. Um, some folks might say, why didn't they extend it up a little bit further? And that big baggage door is the reason. That's part of the reason I wanted to leave that open, so you could have just a clear understanding of what you're looking at right there. Now, our, uh, our tires down here, she runs on a nice set of sneakers. These are Goodyear Endurance Radials, first of all. That's awesome. Step number two is these include tire pressure monitoring, which is great. So that going down the road, you just have a better idea and more peace of mind about the, uh, the situation behind you, you know? Also, notice how you don't see a leaf spring system uh, between those tires. This runs on a torsion suspension package. So there's a difference between torsion axles that a lot of RVs have and torsion suspension. This basically has both. Uh, to give you better ride, better handling, it'll just track and tow behind you better. Now, some folks have asked, you have an outside griddle and a cooktop. Can you use them both? And the answer is yes. You see how they actually do include not one, but two propane cooker hookers, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I, I got, I lost my balance standing up there and the camera got a little bit more wonky than normal. I really am going about this one backwards and different today, but hey, whatever the case, we're getting around there. Um, our baggage doors, all outside compartments, not just these, all outside compartments um, are now a, uh, a slam latch instead of the twist lock system like they used to have. And this is one of the kind of catch-22s of these models. When you have a Murphy bed model like this, you uh, with a one-piece Murphy bed, like Rockstaff is using, your pass-through storage goes under the sofa because the area up front, that blank panel, that's the headboard area of the bed. By the way, here's a pro tip. If you do happen to like lose something off the top of the bed, if it falls back there and you can't reach it, unscrew that panel and you can get yourself back in there if need be. Now, uh, we're looking at one outfit with the power corner stabilizers. That's the handy little push button that you see right there. And even though we have solar on the roof, always, minimum 200 watts, today we're looking at an optional 400 package, you still have that prep plug off the side in case you want to park in the sun, get a second like uh, portable panel that kind of uh, stands alone. And the portable plug-in systems and the roof solar packages they work in concert with one another they don't fight one another they don't overload anything basically the roof solar panel and the portable panels have their own separate charge controllers that will monitor the battery and though the battery is full they stop flooding it so they each do it independently but as a result they work nicely together now this is actually an interesting thing with uh this division they do laminate behind their nose cap there is a one inch laminated wall behind the nose there's also a radiant barrier back there behind the nose that most nose cap builders don't do one if not both of those things so that's just kind of a handy little detail there now you might notice they um i think in the past they had the specific brackets for like the uh slide awning prep that they're not there anymore yes you can still put slide awnings on one of these a, a service team can get you a quote for that our team can get you a quote for that another kind of interesting standout feature is how they're they've maintained 30 pound propane tanks whereas almost everyone else in the small camper world has gone to 20s um if you are going to be doing heavy cooking or cold camping or something like that it's kind of nice to still have that additional capacity uh right there now off the campsite of the rv the storage under the, uh, the, the sofa bed, it was a little janky. You have to kind of reach around a corner to get to it. This side is not as bad because you're not fighting the awning arm. So it's easy to get in and out over here. Um, so I guess maybe depending on what you're doing, plan accordingly. Additionally, if you jackknife lift that bed up from the inside of the RV, you can still reach and access that storage space. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, as we back up here, once again, they have gone with slam latches on all of their baggage compartments. And Rockwood does so much of what I call why not storage. If there's a space, they're going to use it somehow. Like, you don't have to tear apart the dinette to get to everything. Um, that storage is readily available and accessible from the outside of the RV right here, which is handy when you have drawers on the inside of the RV. So it kind of creates separate space. And like I said before... Anything that's going to be load-bearing in the RV, anything they build in-house, whether it's structure or a dinette or whatever, those will all have a welded aluminum cage work to them. Now, sometimes people ask me why that, that vertical door doesn't go higher, and it's because it would be harder to like reach it, latch it, lock it, unlock it, that kind of thing. So they try to keep the door down where it's still accessible. But, you know, that, that's a little bit of the why behind the what for the 
I don't know, people who didn't ask, but maybe would have. So if this video has been helpful for you for little tidbits like that, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, like our video if you've already done the first, and um, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about her. How could they continue to improve? Like years ago, you said you wanted to get rid of the laminated floor. They did. You wanted a hitch on the back. They did it. You wanted solar. You wanted inverter. You wanted slam latches. They're doing it. They're doing all the things. So what's the next thing? Leave us some notes, let us know. That sun is glaring wicked off there. Thankfully, it's not glaring off my forehead because that would blind you. Let me take a knee. Hey, look at that right there. I'll leave you a link in the video description for pricing and availability. Not that you needed me to take a knee to do that, but when you're ready, we're ready. Um, some of our stores have Rockwoods like this. Some of our stores had Flagstaffs. Either way, same thing, we can take care of you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank <music> you.